Hi Queen Elizabeth, it's Jenny here from In Christ in Schools. I don't know where Kevin is today, hopefully he'll be joining us at some point. Um, but we're going to continue looking at our core value, which is joy matters to us. Um, now the Bible talks about joy and... Morning Jen. Kevin, you're late. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to stop and get my coffee. You fill up my senses like a gallon of Magnus, like a packet of woodbine, like a good pinch of snuff, like a night out in Sheffield, like a greasy chip puppy. You fill You're not impressed with our club anthem? Well, aren't Sheffield United at the bottom of the league? Temporary. Gonna put one cup down so I don't spill it. Well, how do you feel when they lose the game? Uh, we look forward to the next one. But, well, say if you do win. No, 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 no. When? Okay, when you win the next game. Thank you. Does that joy always stay with you to the rest of the day? I don't know, it depends. Circumstances may change to the rest of the day. Well, that's my point. That, okay. that joy is temporary because things always come along in life that try to take that joy away. Temporary joy? What does the Bible say about that then? Well, I'll tell you. I've got a verse here from John chapter 15 where Jesus is talking and it's verse 9 to verse 11 and he says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey me, you remain in my love just as I obey my Father and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you may be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. So Jesus is saying here that we can have overflowing joy through God's love and remaining connected to God's love. Yeah, but surely even people in the Bible had what you describe as my temporary joy. What about when we go through the, the negative things that seem to want to strip our joy away? Yeah, it's true because we do go through difficulties, don't we, in life? And I've got a great verse here from the book of James, in chapter 1, verse 2. And James is writing to um, other Christians here. And he's saying, Dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. So it's an opportunity for us to know that true joy that Jesus was talking about, that we find in God's love. So when we're going through difficulties, we can remember that God's love is with us and helping us through those times, and that's where we find joy. So really, in order to find this true joy that you're talking about, we need to stay connected to God somehow? Yeah, exactly. Do you remember last time how we were talking about the fruit that's connected? The pineapple. Yes, pineapples were mentioned a few times, but remember, fruit can't grow unless it's connected to that life source, its life source, the tree or the bush. And it's the same as Christians. We can't know complete or true joy unless we're connected to our life source, God and his love. But what if I'm connected? I feel a connection with Sheffield United. You know, when, when Billy Sharp puts that Patrick goal away, you know, we got Billy Sharp, Billy Sharp, we got Billy Sharp, na 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 we got Billy Sharp, but join in, Billy Sharp. But, okay, you don't still seem overly enthused. Well, that's great and everything, but eventually that joy is just going to disappear. It's going to go away. It's not lasting, is it? It's about being connected to God's love. I get that, but I also feel a connection to United! United! What? United! Manchester United! I think his joy disappears. And that's kind of my point, really. We can know joy in life and in circumstances, but often other things come along to take that joy away. And do we really know God's love in our life? The, the, true joy, the complete joy that we, the Bible talks about, that we can find by knowing God and inviting Christ into our life. 